Hi, my name is Jay Liu. I am a senior application engineer at Teledyne Dausa. I am going to introduce the Xsync fractional multiplier divider in this video. By far, we used to use only integer Xsync multiplier divider. The fractional Xsync multiplier divider is a new feature introduced to all models of linear HS cameras. The fractional Xsync provides more accurate Xsync than the integer Xsync, so that a user can achieve a finer color or channel alignment. This new feature works only with the camera I.O. for now. The camera I.O. accepts only TTL type of signal, so you have to form your Xsync as a TTL signal. Here is an example of a shaft encoder. In general, shaft encoder provides a phase signal as A plus, A minus, B plus, and B minus. You can pick up one of them to be connected to the camera I.O. I choose phase A plus connected to the camera I.O. pin 5 which is a channel that accepts phase A. Camera and shaft encoder signal grounds must be connected. Camera I.O. pin 11 and 12 are signal grounds of the camera. You can connect the encoder signal ground to either pin 11 or pin 12 or both. Now let's take a look at the frame grabber configuration. All linear HS camera are required to work with XTM2 CLHS PXA frame grabber. Choose camera link HS color RGB and load a pre-configured camera file called the CCF file. You can download the CCF files from the Teledyne Dowsa website or contact your local technical support. If you do not have a CCF file, you can configure parameters manually. Just set all parameters as what you are seeing in this video, and you can start from there. As I have mentioned, fractional Xsync has to be fed through the camera I.O., but not the frame grabber. So, I am going to select none here, line sync source. Also, I'm not going to use the external frame trigger. Select disabled. MG buffer parameters leave it as shown. Now, let's take a look at camera part. The camera testing here is linear HS16 color. Let's move to the camera control category. In the TDI mode, select TDI BGR. This color order isn't the RGB order we are familiar with. But don't worry, the frame grabber handles it right. Next, digital I.O. control category. In the trigger mode, select external. In the trigger source, select line 1. By the way, CLHS in is using when feed the Xsync through a frame grabber. Lottery encoder. Literally, it's for an encoder. OK, choose line 1. In trigger input line activation. You can select the rising edge or falling edge or both edge. The both edge feeds the camera two times the trigger pulses compared to rising or falling edge. Let's try the rising edge. Before we try the fractional multiplier divider, let's try the integer multiplier divider first. Choose multiplier divider and look at the image output.
big offset between colors. Try to change multiplier and divider values to find the best combination available. The image looks worse. Try something else. Getting better, but still not so good. Here you go, pretty good now. However, you still can see subtle misalignment. Now, let's try the new function, the fractional multiplier divider. Set both integer multiplier and divider to one time, and select fractional multiplier divider from lottery encoder rescaler order. A lot of shifts. First, change the tenth digit. Let's try three and see how it goes. Getting better. Second, change the hundredth digit. Change it from 0 to 1, much better. Change it to 1.32. Here you go. It is almost perfect. Let's zoom in and take a look. Let me try 1.33. Now it's separating in the other direction. The number 1.32 is the best parameter for this system with the current settings. The optimal parameters are depending on the system. The optimal parameters of your system should be found by yourself through experimentation. In addition, let me explain how to configure strobe light control. You can output the line trigger pulses to the light through the camera I.O. line 3, 4, 5, and 6. In this example, I connected a strobe light to line 3, so you can control the light source by the line trigger signal. Select line 3 in the line selector. Now you can control your light by selecting on or off in the output line source. You can leave the output line pulse delay to zero, but I recommend you do not leave the pulse duration at zero if it was set to zero by any chance. For just triggering the light, one or two microseconds is good enough. It's not necessarily to be set too large so that it might mess up synchronization between camera and light. 
if you are going to control the light on time with this pose, then you can set the period appropriately. Make sure it's not exceeding line trigger period. Thanks for watching.